Welcome back to the arena today. We've got a historic build for you today. Yes, I am very excited to bring to you a historic artifact build based around getting junk out onto the field, upgrading it into something special, and finishing your opponent off really fast. I did a artisan build of this deck in the past just a few weeks ago actually and thought about this deck over and over again in fact i still play the artisan build of this deck it got me all the way to mythic and we're going to be testing out a slightly different build a much more expensive build but some things that you guys might actually have in your collections let's start off with our champion this guy can be your champion if every card in your starting deck has mana value of two or less and we do fit that criteria what does he do for three you can put him into your hand then you pay three more and he is a three two with lifelink and then once during each of your turns you may cast a permanent spell with mana value two or less from your graveyard so opponent has a lot of removal and is removing a lot of the stuff that we have, which we will get into in a second. Then you just put it back out with Loris of the Dream Den. Right. So, moving on. Ornithopter, still in the deck. Volt Scourge, still in the deck. Yes, and so is the Ingenious Smith. We are trying to get these guys onto the battlefield. We're digging with the Ingenious Smith. He's still mostly just digging for our um, artifacts, especially... Anything like portable holes, Esper Sentinels, even lands. That's what he's doing, and he is getting bigger over time. So he becomes a threat that the opponent does have to deal with eventually. But Ornithopter, we're trying to get all that glitters on him, and we're trying to get Miss Chico's Reign of Truth on him. Same with the Volt Scourge. We're just trying to make these guys really, really, really big. Let's move on and talk about some of these new cards that we have in here. And uh, of course, Portable Hole is an older card. We're going to put all the ones that we had in the deck over here. And then we're going to talk about the rest of the stuff, as well as Mishiko's Reign of Truth and all that glitters, just because these two cards are so important to what we are trying to do. All right, so Esper Sentinel states, whenever an artifact... Whenever an opponent casts their first non-creature spell each turn, draw a card unless that player pays X, where X is Esper Sentinel's power. So, if you put all that glitters on this card, then he is perpetually, let's say, a 5-5 for Brevity's sake. Then, you're drawing a card almost in, in any time the opponent plays a non-creature spell, which is great. This Decks like this could run out of steam really fast, and that's not what we want to see at all. So you're drawing cards with this, and you're also drawing cards with the innovative meta attack, because whenever one or more artifact creatures you control deals combat damage to a player, seek a non-land card with mana value 2 or less. Wizards of the Coast has added all of these... Oh man, I always forget the word. I'm actually going to have to go look for it. This is how little I uh, care about this type of play. Alchemy! Yep, that's it. Alchemy. Um, they added this idea in Alchemy, um, which is Seek. Seek it works very much so like, look at the top five, put one into your hand of this sort of card, but it's stronger than that because the uh, computer just runs down into your deck and grabs a card with mana value two or less. That's going to get anything. And it has to be non-land. I think I mentioned that. But it's going to be anything. Um, so... Yeah, it's going to get anything out of our deck. All the cards. It works with the innovative meta tech. It's pretty broken. And if Wizards is going to make a bunch of broken stuff in Alchemy, I'm going to play them and I'm going to win. Because they allow me to do it, you got to do it, right? Anyway, we're going to move on. That's how another way we're drawing cards. We're drawing cards with the Esper Sentinel. We're drawing cards with the innovative meta tech. And uh, we're just trying to get these Ornithopters with all that glitters on them, or Mashiko's Reign of Truth, or the Volt Scourge, more importantly, with all that glitters, or Mashiko's Reign of Truth. We also have a little bit of control in here with Portable Hole and Hope of, work with me here, Jira Purr. This card is a flyer, 1-1, one, one, Thopter. Sacrifice this until your next turn. Target player who has dealt combat damage to Hope of Jira Purr. This turn can't cast non-creature spells. So, if they can't cast non-creature spells, all of our stuff still survives until the next turn, 
especially if we're set up and ready to win the game the next turn. Yeah, poke him with the hope of Jiraper. Then the next turn, you swing in, and then you win. And a card that I'm very excited for with this deck, and a card that I have been beaten with multiple times, is a Retrofitter Foundry. For three and a tap, or well, for three, you can untap this, but so you can do this multiple times in a um, in a turn. But if you tap it and pay two, you create a one one colorless servo artifact creature token. One and a tap, you sack that, you create a one one thopter, and if you sack any thopter, you create a four four construct artifact creature token. Should have read that before I pulled it back over, but. So you, you, you could do the whole string of things. You could do the whole line of things if you had the mana available to do it. But another option is um, these two guys right here are Thopters. We have the O2 Ornithopter, and then we have the 1-1 one, one Hope of Jiraper. These guys are both Thopters that you could sack and make 4-4s. Four and you could do this on your opponent's turn. So if you swing in with, say, an Ornithopter after getting Mashiko's Reign of Truth off and he deal 5 damage, then he's tapped, they swing in, you could tap this, sack this, create a 4-4 four, four, untapped for a nice little blocker. Nice little trick if the opponent is not paying attention, but, you know... Um, Moving up towards Mythic, people are probably paying a little bit more attention, but people do still fall in traps even up into Mythic. So it's always an option for that trap. I'm really excited to bring this one to you guys today because I've had a lot of fun with these artifact builds in Historic, and it's kind of a break from the constant grind of Standard. Thank you for joining today. Make sure you've liked the video and subscribe to the channel to see... Of what we do here we do a lot of budget stuff here we also do some big boys like we have here and this one is upon request from you guys so just keep that in mind out there if you have something you want to see throw it down in the comments and we could probably get to it all right let's get into some matches and see how this bad boy does We're going to opt to play first. If it sounds like I have a cold, it's because I do. It is absolutely, it's great. I love it. Love colds. Hate four mana hands with uh, this particular deck, though. But we are going to keep it just because we can not start drawing cards with the innovative meta tech. And I think that's going to be just fine. Oh, two. Two Mashiko Reigns of Truth. That's fantastic. No attacks. We move on. Gruel. Ah, this is the combo deck. This is the combo deck. This is the second time I've had to record this video because of said cold. And I actually beat this video with a card I have actually in my sideboard. So... We are going to be putting that in between matches, but we're going to try to win this one before he could get his combos off. But his deck is fast. <clears throat> okay, that's really, really good. Exiles a, let's see, Nahari's Warcrafting. He's going to swing in for two. That's fine. We don't want to be uh, wasting our attacks with blockers. I'll tell you what, we were really relying on that um, card draw with the meta tech, though. Swing in for 10. Down to 7. And we're kind of right where we want to be. We're way ahead. Collected Company is where this starts to get a little bit ridiculous. Because he's going to start getting his guys that combo off of each other. Yep, and see, that Prodigy doubles everything. So he gets to seek two cards, get 1-1 one, one counters on this. And if it weren't for him having so low of um, mana, I'd be a little bit afraid. Cancel, pass. Only have one mana available. Yeah, he scoops it up. There wasn't much, uh, he didn't have enough life to really close the door on that one. Hey, he scooped. Um, we're going to get rid of these two. Because he's going to have mostly creature spells. 
<laughs> we'll probably only have three Hushbringers. And add two glass caskets to this deck as well. One Ingenious Myth. Just one. But can still do some work in here. Two mana special. There we go. That's what we kind of want with this deck. A Hushbringer as well. Hell yeah. Let's go, man. Let's do this. There's his mana. We're going to pay the two life. We're going to pay another life. Another two life to cast the Vault Scourge. There's a second mana. Burning Emissary. Did he whiff on the card that he needs? Um, that's not it, but that is still dangerous. We're going to take a turn off from our main game focus, and we're going to put the Hushbringer out. It's a 1-2, and this card, creatures entering the battlefield or dying don't cause tr uh, abilities to trigger. It's going to be very important for this matchup. Mana. All that glitters on the Scourge. And we might as well throw down another Scourge. Yeah, we take another extra point of damage. Two points. But I think we can outpace this, especially with Mishiko Reign of Truth coming down next. And the innovative meta attack. Your deck might combo, but mine does too. Hushbringer turns off whatever this stuff does. So it's great. Okay, well, that's different. Create some treasures. Two, four, nine, eleven. No blocks. Go down to five. Here's the beauty of this. All of these guys have lifelink, buddy. And I'm going to actually pay two life. I'm going to drop this. Then we're going to drop Mashiko's Reign of Truth, pay another life point, and pump the Scourge, and then swing with everything. Down to one. We get a portable hole. We're probably blocking with an innovative meta attack. Aha! But nothing happens. Well, nothing would have happened anyway. He didn't get the combo pieces that he probably wanted this game, but we have the Hushbringer anyway, so. Swings with everything. That's 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. We are going to have to block. Down to 4 again. Love to hang out in that 4 spot, don't we? Yep, grow the Volt Scourge and swing away. And that's it. That is it. No chance at all. No chance for the opponent. We are going to play first. All right. Gross hand. Fine. And alas, the opponent lives. And here we go. Mulligans down to six. And we're going to start with the Hope of Jirapur. Almost all of the things that we have in this deck help the final cause. So I mulligan very few. I don't like drawing four lands with this deck. But alas, sometimes it does happen and we're just going to roll with it. Red. We're going to pull this in. We're going to pay two life. We're going to play the Ingenious Smith and see what we can get. And Esper Sentinel is all right. Not my favorite card to draw here. He's not going to have any non-creature spells, so we don't sack the hope of a Jira Purr. Not quite yet. Mountain into the snoop. 
It's a two mana card. Play with the top card of your library revealed. I mean, cast goblins from the top of your library. We don't want him doing that for sure. So we're going to pay two more life. We're going to portable hole on the snoop. And we'll swing. Just in case we're going to get the Esper Sentinel out. And we don't mind if he casts non-creature spells because we probably draw a card in that situation. Fable! We do draw a card. It's an Ornithopter. Again, we are not to our kind of finishers here. We could... We definitely want to get this guy down. We probably want to get this portable hole where we pay a life. Grabbing that. Growing the smith. Swinging. Down to 11. We draw a card with the meta tech. And it's a retrofit foundry. Which is fantastic. Keep Ornithopter in our hand for next turn. And it looks like we're just able to burn through the opponent here. Drops two. A couple of goblins. Another mana, fourth mana for the opponent, and there's a mob boss. But right now, that mob boss is not great. Let's go ahead and sack this. Grows the thing and more land. That is not what we wanted at all. Pull that to our hand. Swing in with these two. Does he block with the mob boss? If he does, then we don't get the card. But if he doesn't, he's still losing. He needs to have a lot of creatures out. This is not good for the opponent. Could all that glitters here? But I don't see the point yet. Here comes the reflections of Kiki Jiki in action. Large and in charge. He cycles. Boy is still trying. He is still trying. Create a colorless servo. There we go. Grows the ingenious smith once more. And we get the Battlecry Goblin. Another great card if you have a lot of goblins. And he gets a couple there. White. Could kind of take a turn off here. And I think we do. Hope. Grows the Smith. Then we're going to swing with the smith and the construct here. Chumpy away and chumpy away. He's at two. We throw down an ornithopter and we pass. The reason why we don't put all that glitters on right now is because if he has something to remove one of these two then we don't want him to actually remove the all that glitters. Either one of those cards that all that glitters goes on, we win with. Goblin Chieftain, look at you. Grows all of the gobbos. He's going to copy something, right? There's a lot more gobbos. Our life hole is actually in danger here. Copies the Chieftain. Oh yeah, we are in massive trouble here. Okay. New plan of action. I kill that.
we are going to create a servo. No, we don't want to sack anything. We will just grow this dude. Grows the smith. We block the... Oh, we can't block the... That guy's not attacking. Go just like this. We take 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Nice aggressive play, but not enough. Yep, that's it. Swing. That is it. That's game. A nice aggressive swing. A nice little combo there, but I do get a chance to block. It's always nice to see people like uh, do their whole thing and still not have enough to beat this deck. We are going to add three glass caskets because we want to be able to remove a lot more goblins than we currently can right now. And I'm actually thinking about the Hushbringer. To the battlefield, search your library for a goblin card, reveal it when you cycle. Okay. Um, none of that stuff is going to make the Hushbringer any better. But maybe. Yeah, no. We, we want something like this. We would just want the removal. Inbottle deck must have 60 cards. Well, I would not mind adding. Huh. Why don't I have 60 cards in here? Okay. Sure. I'll add one Ingenious Smith. So it's pretty nice that the opponent was able to do his thing last game. Wasn't enough, but he did do the thing. Tree mana, tons of removal as well. That's kind of good against this deck, right? He does get to go first. Gabos are going to be very, very good going first. Almost always, they're going to be very good going first. We did get an Ingenious Smith. So I'm going to actually pay the two life here. And we're going to Volt Scourge. Got to get that life gain going, especially against this deck. Mana. Do you remove the Scourge? Treasure. Okay, we're going to let that live. He's already done his thing. We're going to drop the innovative meta tech, and then we're going to swing. We're going to seek a non-land card, and it is a glass casket, so we got plenty of control. Third mana for turn. What else you got? Battlecry Gabo. That is a nice target for a portable hole. Any swings? No. Nay, says the opponent. Nay. That's fine. I want to get this out first. There is a stick here, so... I wonder what the opponent has. Some sort of uh, removal. Portable hole on that Battle Cry Goblin for sure. That is definitely worth paying a life. But the first match was so good that we're definitely going to keep this in. Ah, just a hard thought. And he chooses correctly. Very well played. Grab the Battle Cry Goblin. Swing. Alas, guys, we have no um, artifacts in hand except for removal, which is still really good against him. Haste 2-2. Two, two. The top four cards of your library put all goblins revealed this way into the hand. Okay. It's really good. And it's too big for my glass casket. So we're going to have to reach down and we're going to have to grab another one of these bad boys here. We're going to pay the two life. We're going to grow it, and then we're probably going to pass turn. Oh, nope, no attacks. We're good. 
nice and calm. I don't feel calm right now. Because he's about to go crazy. Gets another treasure with a wily goblin. There's the matron. What do you do? Search your library for a goblin card. Reveal that card. Put it into your hand. Shuffle. An uncommon, my friends. In historic, this is an uncommon card. He grabs a skirk prospector. Sack a goblin, add a mana. Let's get this out. Let's get all that glitters onto the scourge, and we're going to start attacking. You may not be ready to attack, but I am. Let's get some cards. Portable hole. We're going to use the portable hole. We're going to grab the wily goblin. Reduce his goblin presence because he's got that big finisher guy at the end, right? And it makes my um, all that glitters bigger. There is a spot prospector. He is two mana away from Maxis Goblin Grandy. Oh, nope, he can sack things to cast it. So he sacks three. And there we go. That's big. That certainly is big. Opponent probably taking round two here. Fifteen, fifteen blocks the fifteen. Oh, things are just beautiful when they work out, aren't they? Glass casket. He's tapped out of mana, which is perfect. Okay, Battlecry Goblin goes away, and we have just enough mana for Mishiko's Reign of Truth. Now, he can sack guys for treasure, so he might be able to react to this. But we're going to roll the Volt Scourge to 15-15 and swing and see what happens. He scoops. He scoops it up. He was able to do his goblin thing, but it just was not enough. We're going to opt to play first, as any aggro build would ever want to do. We have a smith, we have uh, the Esper Sentinel, we have a meta tech, and a Mashiko's Reign of Truth. I can't ask for a better hand than that. We'll pay the two initial life to pull the hollowed fountain out untapped, play the Esper Sentinel, pass back to the opponent who plays a beloved princess. All right, we are, it looks like we are going straight into, um, life gain deck. Let's see if he wants to block the Sentinel. He probably does. It's probably a little bit too aggressive of a move on my part. He foretells that is a board wipe. More than likely it is a board wipe. But we do not fear board wipes. We have a Laris. Let's go with the Foundry. Let's play the Foundry. And now we really don't fear them. Swing. Down to 20 with you. Abundant Grace. Gains a life, return target card mana value one or less from the bin to the battlefield. Okay, continue to grow. And we can do a couple of things here. Now we do know about his board wipe. So we don't want to give away everything quite yet. We swing again. He saves himself some damage. And we create the servo. Nice, powerful move. Do you want to wipe the board? Thing is, this is probably Doomscar 
and for three he could wipe the board. It's pretty good. He's just trying to get to his finishers. Oh my god. That is starting to get a little frustrating. Let's go ahead and grab this indefinitely. You need to stop doing that. And we will also Mashiko's Reign of Truth. Make the meta tech grow and swing in for a hell of a lot of damage. Down to nine, we get to draw a card and it is a good one. Here comes the Doomscar. Day of Judgment instead. Okay. Fair enough. Now this is where we get our Laris going. Yep, Ingenious Smith reaches down, grabs the Volt Scourge, and puts Laris into hand. Nice, simple turn. Cleric class. And again, our opponent is doing everything he would want to do. The only question is, is it good enough to beat what we are doing? There we go. We're not playing the Laris yet until the opponent is much lower on cards. All that glitters, we're going to put it here on the Ingenious Smith. And then we're going to swing in for nine. Bam! Down to six. I'm fine holding everything else up. There it is. He finally had to pop the Doom Scar. And Dawn of Hope. Create the servo. Here he is. Oh yeah, we're gonna pay two? Sure, I'll pay two life. Unlike you, I don't care about life gain. Put all that glitters back on this servo. Bam, up to seven, swing away. Down to three. And we'll go ahead and get this down. We lost a the damage there, but when it all comes to fruition, it doesn't really matter. He's had to use his entire board just to contain me for a little while. And if he doesn't deal with that Loris, he's kind of dead. Abiding Grace, still doing its thing, getting him some life. Growing the servo. Okay. So many procs just to stick in this match with me. We're going to sack this, make it a 4-4. And we draw a land. Um, we're going to enter it tapped. And then we're going to Mishiko's Reign of Truth. And we're going to grow this. And swing. He blocks the 11-10. The, uh, he will go to zero exactly? No, he was a 5-5. Five five. Okay. Should have probably put the innovative meta attack out first. If he has another board wipe here, he probably wins. But he's already played two, so we're kind of betting the house on that he won't. Gets a creative soldier. And he gets some life. But how much life can you gain? I think it's only like four or five. Yes. Goes to my turn. Nope, 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 nope. Create a 1-1. One, one. And what do we want to cast now? I'm going to put that, of course, here. We're going to go with the Ingenious Smith. And we're going to grab Portable Hole. Then we're going to use Portable Hole to grab the Soldier. And that should be game. He scoops it up. And let's see how we want to go about this. I, you know what? Hushbringer is going to be very good in this. I really do think so. And of course, we're dumping off 
Hope of Jiraper. And also one. I like all of this stuff. I don't want to get rid of any of it. One retrofitter foundry. We only need one on the field for it to be good enough to win. Legion's Landing. What is this? When it enters the battlefield, create a 1-1 one, one. creature with lifelink. When you attack with three or more creatures, transform it. Well, I guess the goal is not to let you get to three or more creatures. You want to let me draw some cards with the Esper Sentinel? Tap it, or do you want me to draw cards? You tap it. It's awesome. Again, really good stuff there. And we will grow the all that glitters. He's a 3-3. Three, three. Swing. Let's it through. Doomscar. Doomscar is back, my friends. And a hopeful initiate comes out. We got just the thing for that hopeful initiate. Portable hull. Grabbing the initiate. Bolt Scourge, paying it to life. And then we're going to go with another Esper Sentinel. We are going to get so many cards. Down to 13. Oh, wait. I forgot about the Doomscart. Here it comes. Brace yourself. Swings. Yeah, we're definitely blocking. There it is. We do get to draw a card off of this. Two cards off of it. I'm actually just fine with that. Authority of Councils. He will slow me down just a bit. Hmm. Can't quite get that out. Foundry. Smith. We're going to grab Portable Hole. And we're definitely not playing the Portable Hole. Mana, Abiding Grace, and he seems to have his little combo off, but he feels real special. Pay two. So I would like to build out this board state a little bit. Yep, you gained your life, and we whiff. Wow, how did we whiff? Keep building. Swing. Down to 16, end the turn. Speaker of the Heavens. We were hoping to see a creature come out soon. Do this. Portable Hole grabs Speaker of the Heaven. That grows our ingenious smiths. And then we put this on the servo thing. And then we innovative meta tech and swing in for a hefty nine. Oh, wait, that's 12. My bad. Counting can be hard. Cleric class is good, but is it enough to keep you alive? I did not think so. I did not think so. And uh, we get a rank there, guys. That is three games in a row that we have won 3-0 and oh with this deck so far. But... I will be playing this uh, a little bit on my own. Let's go to a post-game wrap, and uh, we're going to talk about this bad boy. I do want to thank you for joining today. I know this was a short one, but this deck is fast. This could get the job done really quickly on your opponent. And as you saw in those matches, the uh, reason I decided I could cut it cut it here after three matches three fast matches was it showcase exactly what this deck does best and it sticks in these games longer than you would expect an aggro build to do no matter what the opponent does he's given me value with the esper sentinel the ingenious smith gets me some value and there is tons of value to be had with alorus of the dream at den if you could keep it alive sideboard makes this deck even stronger with a lot of control pieces everything's a control piece in here and the metallic rebuke um, even w whenever i was playing just 
to test this deck and to play this deck and to try to get back up into that mythic rank. Um, we were definitely, definitely, definitely using Metallic Rebuke as, as, as an asset, being able to protect our creatures and this and that. We could have even made the argument that that would have been good against that white deck that had those board wipes, but I didn't see any need because he seemed to have to wipe the board. Be he. He was comboing, and this deck just destroys those decks. Even the life gain one is not going to do well against this here deck. I really enjoy this deck. I will continue to play this deck. If you, When you see me at Mythic, it's because this deck got me there. Don't have very long to play every day, but whenever I do, it's going to be something like this if I'm playing not for the channel's sake. Thank you for joining today. Make sure that you've liked the video and subscribed to the channel, and I will come back with another one very soon, and I will see you there. Bye.